Okay, the fifth and final part to chapter one here. There's a lot of slides in this chapter because it's trying to review a lot of stuff from general chemistry that we're going to need going forward. Uh, we really don't start with the organic stuff until chapter two. But this is a key slide. I mentioned this at the end of part four. Uh, when you see carbon making nothing but shared pairs around it and satisfying the octet rule in, in these manners, no unbonded pa pairs around carbon, Carbon's always happiest in that case. For single bonds, two double bonds, a triple and a single, carbon likes to make four bonds and, and not have electrons to itself. Nitrogen is happiest when it makes two bonds and keeps four electrons to itself. And nitrogen there, you can see in each case, three shared pairs, uh, one pair to itself. Octet rule satisfied across the board. But these particular ways of doing that, especially stable. A little bit about the uh, vocabulary here. Uh, we're not only going to be talking about different resonance forms, which are moving electrons around and really describing one substance, but there's also the phenomenon of structural isomers. That's introduced in this chapter, and we'll see it more in chapter two. Isomers have different connectivities of atoms. So these three structures are all resonance forms of each other. They're all different ways of describing one compound called fulminate or a polyatomic ion called fulminate. And if you recognize that word, it has to do with explosives because this is one unstable uh, set of atoms here. It's an isomer of the cyanate we saw before because notice the nitrogen's in the middle, not the carbon. So if we change the sequence of atoms, we've got a different substance. But fulminate, like the cyanate, does have three resonance forms. And again, we can see those formal charges and, and look at those as a way to describe to discern which one might be most stable. Negative three in the middle, that's bad. Negative two is bad. That structure on the right, uh, at least it's minimizing the formal charges, and so that's the answer to that question at the bottom. It's the one on the right. Here we've got the cyanate uh, that we just saw a little while ago across the top. Just saw the fulminate in the middle. And as it says, fulminate is unstable compared to cyanate because all of its structures have formal charge issues. Uh, cyanate is able to get a structure on the right that puts zero formal charge of two out of three atoms. That's pretty good. That structure on the very bottom, that row, NOC with oxygen in the middle, it has no name because it doesn't exist. And you can see why that might be true. Look at all the formal charges you get when you put uh, oxygen in the middle. That thing is just too unstable to exist, as it says. So formal charges are a little math trick that really gives us an idea of how stable something might be. So get used to assigning formal charges whenever you're drawing structures. The last little section here is about the three-dimensional shape that is a result of all of these shared and unshared pairs of electrons. And uh, again, your book goes into this. Um, these slides really come from my general chemistry book, and it talks about this idea that the three-dimensional shape of molecules is based on the Lewis electron dot structure and it's based on this idea uh, molecules are such that the central atom tries to spread things out as far as possible and that VSEPR or a VSEPR model as it's also known uh, is the simple idea that electrons try to get as far apart as possible and that determines shape of molecules. And as we go forward, sometimes that's a concern of ours, the shape. Um, so these slides here, I'm just going to click through them. You certainly can read through them in more detail. They talk about some common shapes based on how many electron pairs are around a given atom. And uh, for us, uh, the tetrahedral shape here, it's at the, uh, on this slide, here's what I'm looking for. Uh, that molecule at the bottom, CH4, is called methane, and that is our starting point for Chapter 2. And uh, sometimes we just draw it as if it's flat, but uh, we'll also see structures where it's drawn in its three-dimensional form, where it looks like what you see at the top right-hand corner here. It's a tetrahedral shape. You're going to see tetrahedral used a lot in organic chemistry. So uh, we'll see some of that later on. Okay, this is it for my overview of Chapter 1. See you in Chapter 2.